Hi friends, welcome to the NPTEL course Strategy and Technology, a Practical Primer. We are in week 11 with the theme of Technology and Business. In this lecture, the 51st in the series, we discuss the topic of strategic shifts. We may call strategic shifts as things which are adjacent to the existing businesses or which are distant to the existing businesses. Times are changing more rapidly than ever for businesses. This requires firms to be dynamic and proactive in strategy. We discuss through this lecture how companies can accomplish strategic transformations. Strategic shifts are deliberate moves by organizations to expand businesses by creating out-of-the-box products and services. These can be expansionistic or minimalistic. These can be proactive or reactive. And these can be subtle or sweeping too. These are best engineered with inflections of technology. Strategic shifts and the resultant structural shifts help firms avoid technological obsolescence. Before we can have strategic shifts in the organizations and or in the companies, we need to have mindset shifts. We should be willing to move from established to emerging fields, from conventional to creative processes and from continuity to discontinuity in technologies. Structural shifts or driven by reconfiguring of businesses. When you have collaboration instead of competition, when you have outsourcing instead of in-housing, and when you have external incubation instead of internal integration, you will be generating structural shifts because the organization could become leaner or more deepened, something like that. Larger the universe of established corporations, which has these kinds of strategic shifts, the greater is the propensity for the entire industry to undergo a big metamorphosis. And if companies do not recognize these requirements, then the industry could stagnate along with the firms. Strategic shifts occur in all environments, but strategic shifts help firms proactively change their positioning to be ahead of competition. They also help the firm to be more competitive and agile. Economies may be plagued by recession or by growth. In either case, it is important to have strategic shift as one of the strategic planks. We can achieve as companies competitive advantage through innovative strategic shifts. It should not be random. It should not be knee jerk. And it could involve even opening up of new industrial and market segments. Changes in technology enable agile firms to customize products and services to meet the challenges of recession growth either way, of cost effectiveness, future differentiation either way, and it can be happening simultaneously as well as sequentially. A firm never gains by standing still whether the economy and the markets are in recession or growth. Strategic shifts are essential in both turnaround and growth phases. There are four aspects of strategic shifts because these are deliberate moves by organizations to expand business potential by creating new products and services that are out of the box as far as the current strategies are concerned. There are four aspects of a strategic shift. First, we should define the period. Should it be for a five-year horizon or ten-year horizon? Second, we should define the boundary of the industry whether it is for covering today's com products plus all adjacent products or it has to be a limitless endeavor in terms of this openness for strategic shift. Market segment. Should we stay focused on established market segments or create new market segments or move into other market segments that do not take the current products and services? And what kind of fixed asset infrastructure should we create? Whether it is for organic growth that is required. But if it is for outsourcing, we have to look for that kind of fixed asset in that outsourced company. These strategic shifts are broader in scope and impact than the usual competitive strategies that seek superiority for firms in the marketplace through a mix of generic strategies. Because the generic strategies take forward an established plank of strategy through cost leadership, differentiation or focus. It assumes a base that is already existing. Whereas here you are trying to 
disturb the base. You are trying to disturb the base by making the base small relative to what you would like to bring in as part of the business or you would like to enhance the base through bringing in several adjacencies to the base. The new base will be far different from the existing base, whichever way you look at it. As I said, strategic shifts can be expansionistic as well as minimalistic. The fundamental driver is the identification of the potential fit between the current competencies that can be leveraged and the environment's emerging opportunities that can be harnessed. Google offers a towering example of engineering successful and expansionistic strategic shifts. It has been a universal search engine, then it became an email medium, later on a video sharing platform, a global mapping system, cloud infrastructure company, operating system for mobile and computing devices, created its own branded mobile devices. And through all this, Google has been undertaking one strategic shift or the other and several more also in the FN or in the FN through the alphabet parentage. When we talk about strategic shift, it doesn't mean that it is shift away from the existing business. Strategic shift is the change in the mindset and the paradigm to get into something which is not being done by the company. It doesn't mean that the existing business is completely dissolved. The existing business needs to be strategically protected and grown as per various elements that we discussed. Intel offers a superb example of leveraging the core competencies of chip development and manufacture to align itself with or even lead the several strategic shifts that occurred in the computing and connectivity platforms. In mobility, it was late. Again, that underlines the need to recognize the need for strategic shift in time proactively and make that shift happen so that your entire business continues to grow. Apart from being expansionist or minimalistic, strategic shifts can be proactive or reactive. Proactive shifts lead to market share gains for firms. Use of touch technology, streaming of online music, creation of mobile applications or innovative moves, they were also proactive moves. It helped Apple diversify into mobile audio and video devices. It helped Apple quickly assume leadership position in compact music and mobile devices. Toyota Prius was probably not the first hybrid car ever. The concept of hybrid cars was decades old. Honda Insight probably was the first commercial scale hybrid car. However, by engineering Prius to the same levels of performance as a conventional super-engineered car with the added advantages of fuel economy and minimal pollution. Toyota demonstrated how a reactive strategic shift towards green car could be successful. Once a proactive strategic shift is made by a firm, it becomes doubly difficult for others to defend their positions with reactive strategic shifts because you have become the first mover. To gain advantage over proactive leaders, Reactive strategic shifts need to have further element of diversification and differentiation. Reactive shifts do help firms to at least defend their market share in the face of proactive shifts by pioneering firms. No, no other company came in with a hybrid car that was an equivalent of Prius. To that extent, they left that market segment open for Prius to be dominated. Should they be subtle or sweeping? If a Hybrid car is a subtle shift, not too much of a change with reference to the basic car configuration. Electric car can be a sweeping shift. Autonomous car can be a sweeping shift. Therefore, the models of strategic shift take several shades. Adding products within a business and adding related and unrelated businesses. Totally jettisoning the initial industries and leapfrogging into sunrise sectors. Whichever way you look at it, there could be significant strategic shift that takes place. The motivation for strategic shifts and preference for discrete models of shift stem from a combination of factors. These are market opportunity, industry context and professional entrepreneurialism. A few industries are notable for keeping their firms specialized in their respective industries in spite of the market vicissitudes. The growth aspirations of entrepreneurs and firms induce firms to consciously explore strategic shift. If the industries also have entrepreneurs and firms which have that kind of uh, growth ambition, 
the strategic shifts can be commonplace in the industries. Do shifts help specialization or they don't? Automobile and pharmaceutical industries are particularly notable for specialization. But strategic shifts which appear as subtle or related could have profound business impact. In 2007-8, Pfizer acquired Wyeth. Pfizer by that time was the leader in small molecule product lines. It also had set investments in biotech vaccines and various other fields apart from veterinary medicine and consumer healthcare. Wyeth was by and large skewed towards biopharmaceuticals. Pfizer had a market valuation of $116 billion. Wyeth had a market valuation of $52 billion. Wyeth by employee size was little more than Pfizer and both had their own blockbuster products. But all the products of Pfizer were small molecule blockbusters whereas Wyeth's blockbusters were more of a biological vintage. So Wyeth's decision to add vaccines and biopharmaceuticals made the company valuable for eventual acquisition by Pfizer. And that enabled Pfizer to become something more profound and more futuristic in terms of its total product portfolio. So specialization continued, but the strategy shifted at much greater value to Pfizer. Hyundai in the automobile industry moves from sedan to small car or vice versa, or from car to commercial vehicle or vice versa, or in the nature of subtle strategic shifts. They generate profound impact on global business development of the involved companies. A full line manufacturer through progressive strategic shifts or simultaneous strategic shifts makes a company valuable in terms of the total coverage of the market. Had Hyundai not developed a small car and therefore made a strategic shift from its 1300cc above sedans, it would not have captured the kind of growth it captured in the Indian automotive market. It is not just about a car taking a particular volume. The perception in the marketplace as to whether this company is operating in the market segments that are critical to the Indian market. That's the perception that is going to drive the image of Hyundai in the country. And by taking the right strategic shift, Hyundai has established itself as the best alternative to Maruti Suzuki, which already has evoked an image of small car specialist. As the post-COVID situation demonstrates, reinforcing of biopharmaceuticals and vaccine capability from 2010s was a game-changing move from Pfizer. Similarly, accepting the need for a small car helped Hyundai stay strong. These are the two lessons which come from this discussion. Strategic adjacencies do add value. You have base or commodity materials as your product portfolio. When you get into value added products, you tend to get into a strategic adjacency through a strategic shift that adds greater value to the business as a whole. If steel manufacturers move into steel products, they add value to their business. If paper manufacturers move into stationary items, they add value to their business. If bulk drug manufacturers move into finished dosage forms, they add value. If finished dosage form manufacturers move into drug device combinations, they add value. In conventional strategic terms, such shifts are classified as integration moves. But in the context of the lecture we are having, we should see the strategic shift as a strategic product thought. And it should be seen as adding value to that particular business that is already there, whether it is under threat or it is not under threat. Let us look at the sweeping shifts. Sometimes companies make shifts that are very steep and uh, Product lines get added. Step function changes would be there in the strategy. Business mix will take a dramatic change over time. And as a result, companies would be transformed into conglomerates. Wipro started in 1945 as a vegetable oil company with 100% of its revenues from oils and soaps. But today it is a software giant with over 80% of revenues accruing from software service, but still it is dealing in soaps, oils and other consumer products. Strategic shift didn't mean for Wipro that it should exit that business and that business also had enormous capability for growth. Reliance Industries started as a small textile mill in 1975. 
It is today an energy, including green energy, telecommunications and retail conglomerate, with continued presence in textiles though. The continued touch with textiles prompted the company to acquire Alok Industries under the IBC processes. It is also now looking at Syntex for acquisition. Simultaneously, it is also buying up some brands which are internationally known. It so happens that Syntex supplies those brands in terms of the materials and the products. Therefore, sweeping shifts are also possible. But sweeping shifts need not necessarily mean that the base businesses are neglected or rejected. Many conglomerates are in fact a result of series of strategic shifts executed over time. It is difficult to draw a line between conglomeration through a targeted diversification strategy vis-a-vis -vis through multiple strategic shifts. We also have this very important point that certain sweeping shifts are triggered by inflections of technology. When the sweeping shift coincides with the point of technological inflection, the impact will be very powerful and the transformation would be very radical. Nokia was set up in 1865 as a riverside paper mill in Finland, but it transformed itself completely into a telecommunications and mobile devices global giant. That was an amazing story of strategic shifts from paper to rubber to cables and to electronics from 1967. Nokia entered telecommunications area in 1990. Toyota family first set up Toyota Automatic Loom Works in 1926, but took an important strategic shift to set up Toyota Motor in 1933. Thereafter, Toyota specialized in automobiles to become a global leader. The new strategic shifts of Toyota pertain to smart cities, robotics, agriculture and a few others though in Japan only. India's automotive major Tata Motors was first set up in 1945 to manufacture railway locomotives and engineering products but took a strategic shift towards truck manufacturing in 1954. The next shift came when the company decided to move into construction equipment, utility vehicles and passenger cars. Ashok Leyland was first set up to manufacture Austin Motor cars. But it took a strategic shift towards commercial vehicles because the company believed that India needed commercial vehicles more than cars, given also the kind of public policy environment that existed at that point of time. The timeliness of strategic shifts coinciding with technology inflections in each case has made the above steps growth stories. Even when one story falters, the previously engineered strategic shift sustained the company. That happened in respect of Nokia. Mobile business faltered, but the other shifts were enduring. Companies which stand steadfastly committed to their core or original product and business lines, but do not consider any type of strategic shift at any point of time in any manner, minimalist or expansionist, subtle or sweeping, such companies would face business and economic pressures and volatility. At one end of spectrum, technological changes cause obsolescence and they require timely strategic shifts by companies and industries. At the other end of the spectrum, we have market forces and public policies which dictate the need for strategic shifts even in technologically vibrant and economically viable industries. So how do we really cope with this? Those manufacturers who dealt only with dated products became also dated by themselves. Manufacturers of typewriters, dot matrix printers, incandescent bulbs, photo films, long playing records, audio tapes and products similar to these failed to see the compulsions of technological change and those compulsions destroyed the functionality and economics of the applicable industries. Innovator pharmaceutical companies failed to see the imperatives for lower healthcare costs and the growing need for affordable generic medicines. Therefore, the big pharma lost significant time in taking decisive steps towards generics or to get new, more innovative therapies that could compensate for the opportunity loss of the generics business. To be able to steer strategic shifts, companies should be able to first proactively understand and grasp technology shifts and those technology shifts could be mega trends or mini trends. 
Strategic shift is an essential element of corporate development and growth. Strategy departments often get robotized with time-bound long-range planning or corporate planning exercises. We are in the era of strategic management where we need to look at the strategic management as a paradigm for the entire ecosystem which is occurring all the while. It is no longer the incremental corporate planning of annual variety, yet many companies still are stuck in that mold. The larger a company is, the more bureaucratic and voluminous the planning work becomes. This makes the strategies impervious to the undercurrents that dictate the need for strategic shifts. Alternatively, strategy departments tend to be very random. They take knee-jerk responses to every opportunity that blinkers in the distant horizon. And those could be in terms of mergers, acquisitions or in licensing. So strategic flavor carries the day with such forms, which is unfortunate again. The greater the cash resource of a company, the greater also is the risk of hasty cash deployment on the strategy of the season. It is therefore important that every firm and every chief strategy officer has strategies who can identify emerging shades of competitive disadvantage and the emerging shades of superior competitive advantage and they should be able to visualize these future trends. Nokia didn't change the operating system. It might have done a strategic plan which was uh, perfect to the dot in terms of the process, metrics, etc. But the essential part that is the operating system, that technological trend was not really assessed as part of the strategic plan. So it lost out completely. AOL Time Warner did a mega acquisition m and but it is probably also the biggest failure of mega m and Hewlett Packard acquired autonomy of United Kingdom because it was cash rich and he just wanted to do something in that space. But this failed because of poor due diligence. Ola Electric on the other hand has been a well-timed shift by Ola into electric vehicles. These technological inflections must also influence the firms so that the future of strategic shifts is sound and clear to the firms. I talked about earlier about mindset shifts being a precursor to strategic shifts because the way we think and plan has to change first before we can make shifts in the strategy of a company and also move the entire structure of the company towards the new business. Strategies, despite the capability and responsibility for long-term planning, they tend to become rigid and inflexible towards strategic mobility in their mindsets. Strategic projects do involve creation of assets and organizations with investments. They also require lead times to develop manufacturing and launch products. This is almost like setting up a new business on a greenfield basis. This cannot be allowed to be an LBA for not evaluating dynamic strategic shifts. In fact, a successful and agile firm would be adept at identifying strategic overlaps and overlays, what I can do with the existing resources and capabilities would be understood and the project would take off even as new overlaps and new overlays will be found by the company as it goes through the strategic shift. Reliance is now foraying into new energy and that is obviously anchored around renewables and hydrogen. But these fuel methodologies which are completely different from the oil and refinery business are being supported by the established business. We have created in Reliance an entirely new division or a new entity for renewable energy private limited but it is the base that is supporting this. So that understanding of what will support, what will actually physically transplant itself from the existing business to that new business and what is the new talent and asset base that needs to be specifically obtained for the new strategic shift must be clearly understood by the managements. And therefore, thinking must be agile. Thinking must be flexible and adaptive. To get this proper mindset shift, we also need a commitment to a strategic direction. It should not lead to an inflexible mindset. That is, we are not able to visualize a dynamic future. Therefore, we don't see the need for the mindset shift. When you have a rigidity like that, you would have less than optimal performance by the company. At times, it could be even an existential crisis for the company. Vodafone Ideas stood committed 
to the telecom industry but failed to envisage the dynamics of competition it failed to envisage the dynamics of 4g introduction mindset plasticity another word for or another phrase for mindset adaptability especially at the level of chief officers of the company is essential that is required to trigger successful strategic shifts a few appropriate frameworks are presented here we will discuss this framework 1 we should move from established to emerging it could be a business it could be a product it could be a process but the key thing is that we should move from the established to emerging it is important for firms to set targets of certain percentages of their current resources to be expended on and certain percentage of their future revenues to be obtained from emerging and futuristic domain it is not sufficient if you only say that out of 100 rupees i have for investment i'll put 50 in horizon 1 30 in horizon 2 and 20 in horizon 3 we should also specify the kind of revenues which we would get out of these investments we have seen earlier through the mckinsey's three growth horizons that horizon 1 is about defending and extending current businesses horizon 2 is about driving growth in emerging new businesses and horizon 3 is about seeding options for future growth businesses and the plot is on time versus profit as an extension of the mckinsey alchemy of growth model the third horizon of growth by design should be something of transformational future if you are already into product lines which you are able to visualize which you are able to see very clearly there is no point treating one of those products as the horizon 3 that is wrong you should see horizon 3 in terms of products which are not easily palpable at this stage these are the futuristic bits a company specializing in conventional energy in india for example needs to come in selecting resources not merely to wind and solar but hydrogen two years ago hydrogen was the horizon 3 and it could quickly become horizon 2 so a dynamic plasticity of the mindset is important an energy equipment manufacturer would need to similarly redirect its strategies to enable such emerging energy opportunities bhcl one of the public sector giants is looking at this kind of moving from established to emerging focus on non thermal power derive at least 50% of the business from non thermal thrust on low emission and zero emission transport equipment entry into defense production these are the ways it is trying to redefine its business horizons the concept of entry into emerging areas cannot be just pure technology it cannot be only r and d oriented thinking it also cannot be mere business diversification either it is the true intersection of strategy and technology intersection of technology and business it must be an all encompassing mindset shift to enter and succeed in new industrial or business lines even though the going in the current business seems to be adequate then only you are seen as a person as a strategist looking beyond the obvious otherwise you will not be looking beyond your nose to be able to plan for the company in this process a systematized way of looking at series of businesses that is the three horizon thinking helps that is the framework one framework two is to move from conventional to creative firms that desire to be agile in strategic shifts cannot be conventional in the process to achieve such strategic shifts that is you cannot have textbook method of strategic planning to be able to get into the creative space we all know that we need to design we need to develop we need to produce but this is highly asset dependent sequential and time intensive we need to have a cycle which commences far ahead of the opportunity even if the platform technologies are not readily available so we need to take all the risks that are possible to make that cycle start off early we can develop the emerging technologies and keep on adapting novel platforms so that strategic breakthroughs can be achieved with lower investment intensity and reasonable risk profiles hero motor corp has been gaining an entry to electric two wheelers through ether 35% investment in ether and that provided access to one of the more uh, well established electric scooters in india the charm of the modern automobile we all know now lies in the creative integration of electronics that are proven elsewhere in other industrial products we need to take a bet 
on such things and bring them into the product. That's what Steve Jobs did when he brought in the touchscreen technology to the phones. Modern surgery dramatically reduces invasion intensity through better intra-body imaging and robotic navigation. We have got CT scans that are so sharp that you may not really need to do an endoscopy or colonoscopy to see whether you have got any tumor uh, progression in any part of those gastrointestinal tract segments. So that is what modern medicine as well as modern surgery has done. Framework 3 Continuity to Discontinuity Often times a dramatic and much needed mindset shift is induced by mandatorily welcoming discontinuity. We should be prepared for discontinuity in the system. The shift of the CEO and CXOs in terms of their mindsets must precede any investment strategic shift for the firm. The CEO cannot be a routine CEO for a company to engineer a strategic shift. The discontinuities could be enormous, technology driven or non-technology driven. When it is technology driven, we can see examples such as robots, lasers and photonics occurring in the surgery, medicine and diet. It can simply but yet profoundly be people driven by shaking up an inbred organization with massive induction of multicultural high talent. So it is one is technology driven, new retina made synthetically, it could be implants creating an Alzheimer's patient, memory again enabling a Parkinson's patient move freely, these are all discontinuities that is human chip interface but it could be also great cultural transformation with bringing in multicultural talent letting a company look at the entire globe and the entire products service space that is available and then take up this kind of strategic shift if the government of india were to allow the prestigious technological institutions that is the indian institute of technology offer medical courses and induct foreign faculty and students, it would be a perfect example of discontinuity as a game changer because modern surgery is full of technology. Modern surgery is all about digitization and robotics. So which other institution in India is better equipped to offer this than IITs or IASC? Treating cancer through cell apoptosis and tumor starving mechanisms as well as genomics based drug matching and more recently through immunotherapy. These are all standout developments in the pharmaceutical development. As opposed to treating it solely through cytotoxic mechanisms, these represented a new way of thinking and execution for killing cancer cells. In fact, stopping cancer in its tracks. For cervical cancer, vaccine has been a great development. Now people are looking at vaccines for more types of cancers. Monoclonal antibodies, as I discussed in the previous lecture, became products of the choice for treating several cancers. But they do have their side effects. Their personalized medicine comes into play. They match out the right drug for the right gene structure which an individual has and the faulty gene structure which the cancer in that person has. So firms which decide to grow sustainably through strategic shifts must seek, welcome and leverage discontinuities. We should not fight discontinuities. We should not run away from discontinuities. We should actually welcome them. So the people who are involved in eye surgery should actually welcome replacement of the human eye by a robotic eye. If that is the way technology is going to make a fundamental departure. Placement of the robotic eye is still going to be a surgery. The conventional surgery business is not going to be threatened just because of robotic eye has come. In fact, it will be elevated to a completely new standard. By fighting the trends which are technologically inescapable, it is almost bringing nemesis to our own organizations. Successful strategic shifts also require significant structural shifts in the ways of doing business for firms. As we know, we have different kinds of uh, structures for companies. Some are non-integrated, specialized, that is very asset light, very specialized. Some are asset light, but they are also diversified, that means they do a lot of outsourcing. Some are integrated, specialized, 
they are fully integrated but still stick to their core competencies of certain products there are companies which are fully integrated and diversified in terms of the products over time managers and organizations become overly proud of their creations and achievements and fail to see the benefit of alternative structural solutions to their business needs we have to remember that each structure actually solves the past problem each structure doesn't solve a future problem and each structure grapples with certain problems that the structure itself has brought forth this is the dilemma of organization structures we should be very clear about this fundamental philosophy so to be stuck with an organizational structure is again bringing in too much of rigidity in the strategic thinking and the potential this structural inflexibility becomes a big barrier to the advocacy of even logical shifts you want to diversify into formulations we will say that the structure is oriented toward bulk drugs it is not our cup of tea this weakness tends to be more palpable in firms that have been traditionally integrated and introverted the more integrated a company is the more resistance it is going to be to the change successful strategic shifts through three types of structural reconfiguration of doing business which is explained in the following slides framework a from competition to collaboration the conventional wisdom has been that a manufacturer of an end product can cooperate with only a component maker but not with another end product manufacturer the reconfigured strategy of strategic shift requires a different structure platforms have to be kept proprietary to achieve sustainable competitive advantage that has been the driving theory of the existing competitive mode this has made firms in established industries become asset intensive and the firms lost the ability to leverage the assets available elsewhere for a quick go to market strategy the electronics industry has rewritten the rules of competition and collaboration operating systems display screens camera sensors chips and build facilities are widely shared amongst overt competitors providing latent synergies to all players automobile industry and pharmaceutical industry have been late to come into this era of inter industry collaboration traditional industries and go solo firms would need to accept more collaborative models with competitors framework b from inhousing to outsourcing integration always carries the risk of high assets sunk costs this risk increases proportionally with the speed of technological change if the entire uh, machining structure is dismantled by additive manufacturing there is an investment which will be completely wasteful for a company because additive manufacturing is the way you need to develop a product and that too with 30% lower cost most manufacturers keep their fixed asset costs down by relying on outsourcing and that is seen as a source of specialization along with lean manufacturing so when you look at this optionality you will have uh, four types you can have design in housing you can have manufacturing outsourcing you can have design in housing you can have manufacturing outsourcing you can have design outsourcing you can also have manufacturing outsourcing you can have design in housing you can have manufacturing integration you can have design outsourcing and also have manufacturing integration this is looking at design in terms of in housing and outsourcing manufacturing in terms of in house and outsourcing only those product launches which recover the asset costs in a short period of time will balance the twin challenges of manufacturing integration and design differentiation products which have 10 year 15 year lead times are likely to be risky strategic approaches given that technology is changing far too rapidly to survive in the 10 to 15 year time frame framework c is from distancing to incubation many strategic shifts are companies are stalled or are still born because the existing organization distances itself to those new entities or new businesses companies need dedicated structures to incubate new ideas and new projects there are four aspects of any new idea or a strategic shift and they are required factors technological novelty process creativity entrepreneurial passion and dedicated funding these define 
any new activity which an existing company does. Many times firms make the mistake of interesting strategic shifts to divisions that are seen to be allied to the new ventures. While it may be cost effective to do so, it would not be the best way to execute a strategic shift. Just because a company is doing passenger cars by itself, it doesn't mean that the electric passenger car also should be done by the same set of people in the same facilities with the same resources. Fortunately, many companies are recognizing that that is not a great idea to follow. They are creating new subsidiaries, new divisions, even in new locations to be able to undertake what looks like the same product but with different technological capability. Strategic shifts are very much like startups. They have technological novelty, process creativity, they require entrepreneurial passion and dedicated funding. So every new idea has to be incubated like a startup. We need to have organization leaders and structures that support the above four characteristics. To summarize, strategic shifts of firms involve three distinct frameworks that are futuristic, innovative and disruptive. That is, we need to move from established to emerging. As I said, that established could be horizon of business, could be horizon of process, could be horizon of product and the emerging should be the new one. Then you are going futuristic in terms of your strategic shift. You should be willing to move from conventional to creative. That means innovative aspect is ingrained in strategic shift. And you should be willing to face discontinuity. At times you should welcome discontinuity by yourself from continuity to discontinuity. Disruptive. Futuristic, innovative and disruptive is the framework that enables strategic shift. But for that strategic shift to succeed, you need a structural shift. That is, you should go collaborative, you should go networked and you should be willing to incubate the new strategic shift ideas and businesses. So, from strategic competition, you should move to st structural collaboration. You should move from in-housing to outsourcing and you should, instead of distancing yourself, to new ideas and new products, you should incubate them willingly. Structural shifts and strategic shifts are closely aligned. Typically, structure must follow strategy. But strategy shifts at times become feasible and effective only when they are accompanied almost simultaneously by structural shifts. Focusing on technology as a competitive strategy would be of little benefit unless it is leveraged to engineer strategic and structural shifts in firms and their businesses. They are linked to supportive and enabling mindset shifts. We have discussed many aspects of this. I will summarize this here. Strategic shifts moves from established technology approach to emerging technology approach. Moves from conventional approach to creative approach. Continuity in ecosystem to discontinuity in ecosystem. And in terms of our structural configuration, instead of competing with all, we want to collaborate with all. We, instead of trying to be huge and self-dependent, self-reliant, that is through in-housing and integration, we are willing to work with the entire network to be able to be lean and also provide volumes to them. Instead of being a monolithic structure, we are willing to be divisional. Strategic shifts are essential for growth aspiring firms to visualize and manage a dynamic future ahead of competition. Firms need to be able to proactively identify the declining status of current businesses and product lines and visualize the need for appropriate strategic shifts. There is a challenge involved in undertaking strategic shift because we need to identify the technology shift and to be able to do that we need to have a mindset shift. Then only we will be able to work passionately. We will look for emerging opportunities, creatively manage new products and services and deploy discontinuities to our advantage. In addition, firms should pursue beneficial structural configurations that favor collaboration, outsourcing and incubation so that our ability to explore strategic shift is an organizational DNA, it is a process DNA. And when you have that kind of capability in the organization, organizations can bring in transformations within their own functioning as also in the industry's functioning. 
Let's take a case study of integral buses. This will demonstrate some of the points which we discussed. But before that, let's look at the chronology of early car inventions. And they were done by imagination, visualization and disruption, which I proposed earlier. Three types of innovation. In 1901, we had telescopic shock observer. In 1902, we had standard drum brakes. And even now, we have standard drum brakes. In 1908, we had Model T. We still have the same kind of automobile configuration. 1911, we had electric starter. 1914, steel car body. 1919, foot pedal. 1922, hydraulic brakes. 1926, power steering systems. 1931, independent front suspension. 1935, flashing turn signals to tell the others whether the car is turning right or left. 1939, automobile air conditioning. 1950s cruise control, 60s catalytic converter for emission control, turbochargers for better fuel mixing and efficiency. 1966 another step function increase, electronic fuel injection. 1970s airbags and positioning system. 1980s anti-lock braking system, onboard diagnostics. 1990s automatic stability control, hybrid car, smart key, electric vehicle 2.0. 2000s dual clutch transmission rear view mirrors 2010s connected vehicle autonomous driving electric vehicle 3.0 of these some are purely by imagination many are by visualization and some by disruption the point is that if there is spring of multi-leaf capability you can also have a single leaf spring provided that material is capable of having the Resistant power for multiple up and down movements. If you have manual steering, getting into power steering is not a great deal. But it uses certain technology from another industry to be able to do that. Similarly, if the brain can digest all the information and understand for itself how to navigate itself, a computer can also do that and feed that information directly to you. That's GPS is born. So for every invention which you see, you can have a corresponding Previous generation logic, which is substantially increased in the new development or in very few cases, straight away a new thinking that has come about, which was not earlier uh, thought of. So you have regular bus and you have integral bus. What is the tangible solution to public transport woes? We require a bus which is sturdy, but a bus from which people can alight and board easily and the bus should be capable of taking children as well as geriatric people that is old age people easily and because you don't want to create a new pavement infrastructure you should be able to be flush with the pavement so that we don't have an up and down kind of uh, movement to be able to do that, you require a fully integral construction because the current construction methodology, at least in India, used to have the truck chassis because, as I said also in the earlier lecture, the tire determines the height at any point of place where the tire is positioned. So, everything is standardized in terms of a chassis that is enabling a body above the truck derived bus rule the roost in the Indian passenger transportation system. That is the configuration. Floor height used to be 1.1 meter, at least 4 steps involved from the ground. Wheelchair access impossible. Construction integrity prone to rattle because too much of bolting is involved in this construction. Engine options typically internal combustion engine. Engine mounting front. When you think of an integral bus, it is a completely different configuration. All welded, heavy duty section with welded body and panels. The step height could be as low as 340 mm and even can be lower. It is also possible to do this with kneeling feature. That is, the bus itself can be brought down to the height which you require. Construction integrity rattle free. Potentially electric power pack and the engine mounting can be on rail. So the integral bus construction can be configured for low entry whereby aged and infirm can enter easily. It can be universally accessed by handicapped challenged or not so challenged it will provide comfortable ride more amenable to electronic transformation more amenable to electric transformation and enables easier passenger entry integral bus would also be ideal for the 
autonomous connected vehicle and electric transformations. The only issue with integral construction is that it requires integrated design and manufacturing and only major commercial vehicle manufacturers can afford this. A feasible or even desirable alternative for India would have been to aim for a modified internal design which combines the unified construction attribute of integral bus with a low floor height that is appropriate to Indian road conditions because we also have the situation of flooding of the roads. So if you bring down the height of the bus far too low, there is a chance of flooding the power pack. But if you look at what is happening elsewhere, for example this Mercedes Benz future bus, you will see that a huge transformation is taking place in the bus transportation and we should be aware of that. The city pilot is the Mercedes Benz future bus, which is based on the autonomously driving Atros truck with highway pilot that was published in 2014. Still, it is undergoing evolution as a city pilot bus. It can recognize traffic lights, communicate with them, safely negotiate junctions controlled by traffic lights. It can also recognize obstacles, especially pedestrians on the road and brake autonomously. It approaches bus stops automatically, it opens and closes its doors at the appropriate time and it is also able to drive through dark tunnels. This semi-automated city bus improves safety, it relieves drivers workload, nothing remains hidden from the cameras and radar systems which are continuously operating from all angles and the data is taken by the computer to provide the necessary feedback in terms of driving, improves efficiency. It is smooth, predictive driving style, saves wear and tear while lowering fuel consumption and emissions. With its smooth and even rate of travel, that is stable rate of travel, it improves the comfort of its passengers. That is the goal. The technology in buses has been moving forward. Engine manufacturers are developing various solutions to improve at various levels. One, using all the energy that is wasted or reducing the emissions themselves, looking at driver comfort and vehicle safety, power assisted steering, adjustable and air suspected seats and ventilation blowers, things like that, disc brakes, LED headlamps and things like that. But all of these things make the conventional bus a better bus. They are not making the kind of change which the Mercedes Benz has been shown to make. We will get driverless truck at some point of time. Tesla is already planned to introduce a cyber truck, but for COVID and semiconductor chip shortage, it has been able to introduce it. So the logistics partners are waiting for the day when all vehicles and trucks will be connected trucks, autonomous trucks, so that things can be done more efficiently. It is not easy to get drivers in the developed markets because they would like to work in certain other areas rather than haul the trucks for days together. So that has become a rare species in the developed countries. Autonomous vehicles, self-driving vehicles are the answer. To be able to get these things, you need new technology. Integral bus for the passenger transportation and driverless trucks for the cargo transportation. Then school buses is a specialized category of buses. You need advanced telematics, you need video surveillance, you need 360 degrees cameras, you need requires intelligent speed assistance. All of these things can be packed with the kind of electronics that we have and which are being used in several other products, be it the advanced digital cameras, sensory based movement systems, high resolution wide angle cameras or distance measurement products such as radars and lidars. Everything is available in different industries. All of these things must be brought together so that the school bus becomes safer for children. So we have seen integral buses, we have seen driverless buses, we have seen self-navigating buses, we have seen electric self-navigating trucks, we have seen extremely safe targeted school buses. All of these things are, have been made possible by the technology shifts and those technology shifts have brought in those strategic shifts. But to be able to those shifts, a mindset shift had to be achieved. If the companies and the strategists continue to think on the existing lines, then the change would not be happening. So if business has to prosper, 
strategic shifts have to occur and if strategic shifts have to occur technology shifts are to occur and for that mindset shifts are the most important ones to occur thank you for your attention we'll meet again in the next lecture